I saw power. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Lord of Lords, mighty God, Prince of Peace, my provider, my strong power, he's my healer, and my shelter. Let's magnify the Lord, let's magnify the Lord. Lord of Lords, Mighty God, Prince of, of Peace, my provider, my strong tower, and my healer, God my healer, God my healer, God my healer, God my healer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. King of kings, Lord of lords, mighty God. Amen. My provider, my strong tower. He's my healer. My Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Oh, yes, he is. He's a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Lord of Lords. Mighty God. Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. My provider. My strong tower, he's my healer. Oh yes, raise his name, raise his name. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, praise his name. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shout it out. 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 Amen. Amen. Shout it out. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's a mighty healer. Hallelujah. My God is a great, big, wonderful God. I serve a great, big, wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings, my brethren. Greetings. Welcome to our teleconference service. And we want to worship the Lord. We want to glorify His name. We want to lift up and praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Because He's worthy. He is worthy of all our praises. So it's good to be with you tonight. And I welcome everyone to this teleconference service where we lift up the name of Jesus above every name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. And I'm going to pray. And then I'm, after I pray, I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song. And then I'm going to go into the Word of God. The Word of God today is taken from John chapter 14. It's in John chapter 14. And I'm going to read some verses down. But before I do, let I pray. And then I'll call Sister Rose to sing a song for us. And then I'll go into the Word. God bless you. God bless you. Glad to have you all joining us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we worship and adore your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege that we can call upon your name because your name alone is excellent. And we thank you for the power that is in your name. Bless everyone that is joining and those who are 
and those who will join after lord i pray you bless them also i pray you will lead us lord and lead us to the praise and to your glory that we may lift up your name and glorify you bless everyone and everyone that hear your word lord let your blessing be upon us all we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory in jesus name and say amen and amen amen Amen. And so Sister Rose asks you to sing a song for us, prepares a song for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Greetings to each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus. I feel so blessed um, this day to have life. God is so good. Um, I'm just going to sing a song just to remind us because he lives, we will face tomorrow. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow because it leaves for faith with God because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living because it lives. Amen. Glory. Because it lives. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Because he lives. Because he lives. Amen. Oh yes, 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 yes. bless you bless you sister rose god bless you he lives and because he lives i can face tomorrow hallelujah because he lives all my fears are gone hallelujah because i know he holds the future and i know hallelujah i can face tomorrow we can face tomorrow because he lives god bless you i hear pastor winston dear god bless you pastor winston god bless you joining us tonight and we just want to worship god and everyone else we welcome you in this teleconference service i will call on pastor winston as usual at the end um just to give us a word of encouragement a man of god faithful to the lord and i'm very glad to be associating with this man god bless you today our topic will be about peace the peace and i, I want to frame it this way have you got your piece of peace have you got your P I P E I C E of P E A C E, a piece of peace? Have you got it? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to read about the peace that God promised us, that He has given us, and what it means to us. Peace. Deep peace. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. The songwriter says, wonderful peace. Sometimes I don't think people really know the value of peace. But let's go to the Word of God. And we're looking at St. John chapter 14. As I said, we're going to read 
a few verses and I'm going to go through um, the scripture according to how the Lord lead me about peace, the peace, the peace. So it goes on from um, St. John chapter 14, it's, it reads, go, Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. And whither I go, he know. And the way he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? <laughs> Verse 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, he should have known my Father also. And from henceforth he know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, unto the Lord. That was Thomas. You see, this disciple loved to question the Lord, you know. Philip said unto the Lord, Show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with a time with you, and, the, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Brethren, these are not my words. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, it goes on to say, Believe it thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whosoever he shall ask in, whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he asks anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandment, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, and the, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye have known him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. And I will leave you, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At the day, at that day, he shall know 
that I am in the Father, ye are in me, and I in you. Hallelujah. He that has my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Verse 22, Judas, this is not Judas Iscariot, this is the other Judas. Judas, not Iscariot, Lord, said, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and we will make our abode with him. He that loveth me not he that loveth me not keepeth my sayings. And the word which I, which he shall hear, is not of me. He that loveth me, not keepeth my sayings, and the word that he hear of me, and hear not of mine, which he hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things are, s are spoken unto you, yet being present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you of all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And the last verse, verse 27. Peace I leave unto you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. I think those are wonderful words, these words of our Lord Jesus telling us. He knew that he was going to be crucified and died, buried and resurrected. He knew everything. And he knew that once he was in the flesh among his disciples, he was a comfort to them. He was, he was a comfort. Everything, call the Lord Jesus, call the Lord Jesus. If someone is sick, call Jesus, call the Lord Jesus, because they could reach out and they could catch him and they could call him. I'd send a message and he would come. Hallelujah. And Jesus knew that a time would come when he would not be here in the flesh. But he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Have we, have we got that peace that he has given unto us? And are we, have we got that peace of peace that he has given unto us. In John chapter 14, the first, first thing Jesus says is, let not your heart be troubled. And when we're living in this world, we're living in a world full of trouble. Full. I'm not even saying half full. A, a world full of trouble. Every side we look, every angle we look, every direction we look, there is trouble. And to an addition to the troubled world 
is a lot of troubled heart. But Jesus has left us with a peace that despite the troubleness of this world, the tumult of this world, the confusion of this world, he provide us a peace that say, peace be still. It's like when Jesus was on the water, when he was in the boat and the boat was troubled and he was in the bottom of the boat sleeping and everybody was, all the disciples was worried what's going to happen to us. Jesus was resting, sleeping because he knew he had control over the elements of the storm, the wind, whatever it was, he had complete control so he could rest. Despite the wind and this, the, sheep, the, the ship is tossed in from side to side, water is coming in. But he, he was peace himself. Jesus was peace himself. So he's saying, let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. If we believe God, you know, a lot of people said, oh my God, God, I love God, I love God. I love God. I serve God. I do this, I do this, I, I do all these things because of God. But they do not recognize Jesus. And they find all sorts of names to call God. But they can't call him Jesus. He believe in God, believe in me. This is what Jesus is saying by his word in St. John chapter 14. If you believe in God, you must believe in Jesus. You can't believe in God and say you believe in, say for instance, you believe in Allah or Rastafari or some other, some other, some other God. God, God give God some other name. He that believe in God, believe in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that comforting? I, you know, the Word of God is so comforting when we think about how good God is and how loving He is and how caring He is. You know, like how we have that love for our children. The love that God has surpassed the love that we have for our children. In my Father's house there are many mansions. And I have one for you. I'm going to prepare one for you. Because I love you. This is what God is saying to us. This is what Jesus is saying. Because I love you. There are many mansions but I'm going to prepare one for you. You don't have, you don't have to work for it. I'm preparing one for you. And if it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place that where I am, you may be also. I go to prepare a place for you. And when we have that comforting word from the Lord Jesus, we shouldn't let anything worry us. I mean, whatever's going on around the world, we shouldn't let be too concerned about it. It should go to it should just go and come and come and go through one ear go to the other. But what we need to concentrate on is in the word of God and the comfort that He gives us. There's no comfort in this world. There's no peace in this world. The world don't know peace. Because the world has got something they call peace, but it isn't it is a counterfeit of peace. Because the peace that the world give it is a peace that is here today and gone tomorrow. The peace that God give us is an eternal peace and is a peace that no man can take away from us. I go to prepare a place for you. God, Jesus is gone to prepare a place, a mansion, a beautiful mansion. He said, I will come. If I go, he said, and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you. I will come and take you to that place that I have gone to prepare. That where I am, hallelujah, that where I am, ye may be also. What a wonderful word. And the word of God is peace. The word of God is peace. And you know, when we hide the word of God in our heart, we have a peace. 
because we're not too concerned about what goes on tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow no matter what is going on and what the world is talking about and you know threat of nuclear war and all that we don't need to worry about that Jesus has got control of tomorrow that's why he said let not your heart be troubled if you believe in God, you believe in me, you believe in Jesus. Because he is God. And whether I go, he know not. Whether I go, he know. So whether whether I go, he know. And the way he know. So Thomas come now to ask Jesus a question. This is the Thomas. Thomas that did not believe that Jesus was resurrected, but he he loved God just the same. Sometimes people love God, but their faith is not very strong. But he loved God. So Thomas said, Lord, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? We don't know where you're going. <laughs> And we don't know the way to where we don't know the way to how to get there. That's what Thomas was saying, basically. And Jesus answered him. And you know, Jesus' answer was clear and bright, clear and bright. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. These are powerful words. Jesus says, I am the way. Jesus is the way. He is the way. He is the path. He is the road. He is the way. And he's the truth and he's the life. Without Jesus, there is no life. And people who without Jesus have no life. No real life. They may have a form of life. But without Jesus, man has no life because he is the life. And if you leave, if any man leave Jesus out of their life, they have no life because he is the life. I am the way. I am the only way. There is no other way. I am the truth. There is no other truth. There is no second truth. I am the life. There is no other life outside of me. Jesus was saying there is no life outside of me. There's no way outside of me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If any man wants the way to know the way, they have to come to me. This is what Jesus says. If you want to know that any man, any man, no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, no matter what language they speak, if they want to know the way, they have to come to Jesus. If they want to have the truth, they have to accept Jesus. If they want life, I'm not. We we live in a life here. It's not a real. It's not our real life. This is not our real life. This is a form of life that we are living. It is not our real life. Life has no end. Life knows no death. And this is, the, this is the life that Jesus came to give us. And he came to show us the way. He is the way. Jesus is the way. See Jesus, you see heaven. See Jesus, you see God. See Jesus, we see life. See Jesus, we see salvation. We see hope. We see everything. Everything is in Jesus. There's nothing outside of Jesus. And this is what every man needs to come to the understanding that Jesus is the way. There's no other way to go to the Father. You can't join some other cult or some other uh, whatever it is and leave out Jesus. doesn't matter what you join as long as you don't leave out Jesus. You can't leave him out. You cannot leave him out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, he should have known my father also. Henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. How clear is that? How, how clear is that? That is 
that's that's so clear. That's as clear as the sun. If he had known me, if we know, if we know Jesus, we know God. If we know Jesus, we know God. And Jesus has shown himself to us in every way. Jesus had opened up himself to us like a book. Some, Jesus had opened up himself that we can actually approach him. Like, you know, like Thomas approached him and said, uh, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. You know, Philip said unto him, show us the Father. He had known me. He should have known my Father henceforth. He have known him and have seen him. After Jesus said all this, you see, sometimes when the word come to us, it's very hard for it to... to, to uh, to be absorbed in our soul and in our spirit. Sometimes it's very hard when we receive the word of God for it to absorb in our spirit. The word of God needs to be absorbed into our spirit. And even though Jesus was speaking to his disciples, they still did not comprehend. They could not comprehend exactly what he's saying. Because after he said all this thing, Philip comes now, in verse 8, Philip comes and said unto him, Philip said, show us the Father, and it suffices us. If you look at what Jesus said <laughs> to Thomas earlier on, and if Philip understand what, if Philip understand what P Jesus was saying to Thomas, when Thomas asked him, where thou goest? If Philip understand, he would not have asked this question. But the thing is with us, sometimes the word of God takes a very hard to absorb in our spirit. And then, so Philip said in verse 8, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. <laughs> Philip is saying, you've said all this, Lord, but show us the Father. We, we want to see him. It, 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 we'll be satisfied. We'd be satisfied if you just show us the Father. You know, you talk about the Father. You know, you say this about the Father. You, you know, you tell us about heavenly things. Show us the Father. This is Philip. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been with you so long a time? Have I been with you so long time now? Have I been with you so long? Have I been so long time with you? And yet you have not known me, Philip? As a question. So God expect when we when we receive his word that his word would absorb in our spirit. And when it absorb in the spirit, then his word can take root in our heart, and then his word can be manifested in us, in our understanding, in our perception. But it was very hard for Philip to comprehend what Jesus was saying. So he asked, Philip said, show us the Father. We want to see him. Show us. So Jesus was a manifestation of God. And this is what, this is what, this is what Jesus was saying to Philip. I am the manifestation of God. I've been with you so long. A time. And thou sayest unto me, show us the Father. And yet you have not known me. You have not known me. So the Father, when you, when you know Jesus, you know God. And God said, he, he that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believe thou not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, hallelujah, but the Father which dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Amen. Jesus was saying clearly to his disciples, I'm just a vessel. The outer man is just a vessel, but in me, everything I do is, is, a, is the almighty God in me. Who is doing it? It's not me. I'm not doing it. That's what he says. Believe thou not that I'm in the Father. The words, the words, the words that I speak, I speak not of myself. 
So every word that Jesus spoke was of the Father. The Father was there in him. The no one no wonder the Bible says what the the, the the mystery of godliness, how God was manifested in the flesh. That's what the Bible says, how he was manifested in the flesh. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he says, the word I speak is not of myself, but the Father who dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. You know the scribes and Pharisees, he, 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 they did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Because their eyes was blinded. I'm not talking about the, the natural eyes. Their spiritual eyes was blinded. And their spiritual ears was deaf, was deafened. They could neither hear nor see. They think they knew what they knew, but they knew nothing. One songwriter says, you know nothing until you know the love of God. The scribes and the Pharisees contradict everything Jesus said because they were spiritually blind and they were spiritually deaf and they were spiritually dumb. But God opened the mouth of his disciples. He opens their eyes. He opens their ears. So they could hear spiritually. Spiritual speak a different language from the earthly. So Jesus said, believe me that I am in the Father. And the Father in me. Or else believe me for the well work's sake. We're talking about peace. The peace that God gives us only come in the understanding of who Jesus is. That's where the peace comes from. The peace... That Jesus promised to give the peace that he said, the peace I leave unto you. It only comes with the understanding of who Jesus is. It only comes with understanding when God's word is saturated in our hearts. And absorbed in, his heart, in our heart. And that we not dispute the word of God, but we accept the word of God and receive it joyfully. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Jesus as a natural man could not do the works that he did. If he was just flesh and blood, he could not do the works that he did. But the Spirit of God filled with dwelling in him. And so because of that, he could just speak the word and it was done because the word was coming from the Almighty God. Every word he spoke was from the Almighty God, the great God who made this universe, who made the earth, heaven and earth, who created everything that we see visible and invisible. The great Almighty God was fullness of it, was in Jesus. The fullness of that God was in Jesus. He said, if you believe me, if you don't believe, believe just for the work's sake, just because of the work I do. Jesus felt, um, felt, fed a multitude with three loaves and five, fi five fish and three loaves. And he fed 5,000 people. Jesus fed 5,000 people with two, three loaves and five fishes. That is God. Believe me for the work's sake. Believe Jesus for the work's sake. If you don't believe anything else, believe for the work's sake. For the work's sake. For the work he has done. For raising Lazarus from the dead. When he was dead three days. And they said, behold, master, he stinketh. He stinketh. His, his body has been decomposed. But Jesus says, I am on the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Oh, glory be to God. What a wonderful God we serve. What a great God we serve. In verse 12 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. 
Imagine that. If we believe it on Jesus. He, didn't, he said, if you believe on me. Verse 12. St. John chapter 14, verse 12. If you verily, verily, truly, truly, you know, emphasizing, I say unto you, I'm saying this unto you, I'm emphasizing this unto you. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. That's the word of God. You know something, I just, I just rest and stand upon every word of God because every word of God is yea, yea, and amen to me. I have nothing to contradict in the word. I have nothing to contradict in the word of God. I don't find the word of God contradictory. I find it to be quite clear. And the way Jesus expounded himself, it is so clear. It is like ABC. Verily, as if we believe on Jesus, if we believe on Jesus, we can't do nothing believing on something else, believing on someone else. He said, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works shall he do, because I go to the Father. So now Jesus has left us here. He's gone to the Father. He has left us in the physical sense, is that in the here, Jesus is not in here in a physical body, but he's here in the spirit, in the form of the Holy Ghost. That's why they received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Because he promised them that he would send the Comforter, and the Comforter would come in his name. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, came in Jesus' name. So the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Whosoever shall ask in my name, whatever he asks in my name, I will do that my Father be glorified in the Son. If he asks anything in my name, I will do it. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. So, when we, when we love the Lord, and when we love his word, and when we keep his word in our hearts, we, he comes in us. He dwells in us. He, in, he, he, he empowers us. Empowers us. He will remove every fear and every doubt. And he give us his peace. And with peace come power. Because when we have peace, we have power. When we are doubt and fear, when we don't have peace, we then creep, then creep in doubt and fear. And everything else that comes with it, confusion, nothing good. But when we have Jesus, when we have the word of God, we have power. He went on to say in verse 15, If he love me, keep my commandment. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide in, with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, which the world, the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth in you. And shall be in you. Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. I pray the Father, He shall send you another comforter. The comforter is what gives us peace. The comforter, we have the comforter. The comforter is the Spirit of God. The comforter is Jesus dwelling in us. And there, thereby we have peace. For He shall abide. With you forever, even the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive. Now the peace that we have, the world cannot have it, the world cannot receive it. It is not given to the world. It is given to the children of God. It is given to every one of us who love God. The spirit of truth, which is peace. The world cannot receive it. They cannot have it. Because they turn away from God. They don't, they don't want to hear about it. Right now, people don't want to hear about God. They want to hear about everything else. They want to hear about the worst thing. But God, no. They don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want to receive the word of God. They don't want to receive the word of truth. 
So therefore they cannot have this peace. But Jesus has given us peace. And says the world cannot receive because it seeth it not, neither knoweth him, but he know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to, I will come to you. A little while the world shall see me no more, but ye see me because I live. He live also. And that day shall know that I am in the Father. And that day, Jesus is saying, when we receive the Spirit of God, when we receive the Spirit of God, he said, that day he shall know. When You see, when we receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is there to open our spiritual eye, our spiritual understanding, and to give us insight of who God is. The world cannot have it. It's only when we accept God, we receive God, love God. The day he shall know that, that day shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. What a lovely combination. I in the Father, I am in the fa my Father. Ye, you are in me, and I in you. What a wonderful combination. So we're all together in God. He that has my commandment and keepeth them. He that, he, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest unto him. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful, brethren. We're talking about the peace. We only get this peace that Jesus gave us. We only receive this peace that God, Jesus, gave us by loving Jesus, by knowing him, loving him, serving him, and keeping, and keeping him in our heart. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. We must keep the word of God in our heart. God bless you, my brother. Time is well spent. There had, I had a lot more scriptures to go through, but the time is gone. And I only stayed on St. John chapter 14. And I still didn't complete the verses I wanted to do. But God bless you. And, you know, I let the Lord lead. God bless you. I'm going to ask. Um, God bless you. I'm going to ask. Pastor Winston to participate in this part of the service and before I close I don't know if he's nearby God bless you but it's wonderful God is good God is great and may I just say let us keep this peace that God has given us because when we have this peace that God has given us we can live a free a life free of fear and doubt and that's what we need to have a life free of fear and free of doubt our god is good our god is great and we just have to keep praising him for who he is and what he is for what he's done for us because he is truly wonderful and i am blessed i am blessed and we are blessed we are blessed to know who Jesus is. And as the verse says, in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Let not your heart, brethren, I just want to say, let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. I am going to close now and may the good Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Uh, Pastor Winston, now you're back with us. God bless you. I want you to just say a few words before we close. God bless you. Um,
Greetings, greetings, sir. Greetings. God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. God bless you so much. Yes. Uh, I'm glad this will be a huge Tuesday. Can no appeal. Yes. Yes, it's so important to Christian to keep the peace with each other. Because I love that. Yes. That's even at the foot of the screen. Yes. Peace. Amen. Peace is one of the screen. And we should always try to keep the peace. Yes. Brother and sister. St. John. St. John 16. Not eat me no therefore a sorrow. And he now therefore have sorrow. But as I see when I will see you again. And your heart rejoice in your joy. And you got one one word, one word. If uh one six one second here. Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Peace, 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 wonderful peace coming uh, down from our Father above. Um, uh, okay, one, one verse here, one verse, one verse. Um, let's go to um, Turbo, let's go to um, Galatians chapter 5, 22. Galatians 5, 22. Yes. But, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, mm. temperance. Again, there is no such law. Well, the fruit of this way is not, is, is joy, peace, love. You must have love with the brother and sister. I must keep the peace. The way you keep the peace. The way you Yes. Try and keep it. Can you be well pleased with you? I don't understand how some people love the malice. Mm. And you can church it. If you have the world, you can't do anything. But learn your life has been changed. You have been changed. And you come now to your scratch, your personal Lord and Savior. You must try your best to live good to people. Amen. Amen. Yes. I'm talking about live good to people. No war, no fuss. We must not be honest with each other. If somebody Amen. Is, if somebody come in church and know say morning, don't be upset. Remember that public come in church and say morning, yeah, and somebody in mind. And they'll be hard. They come and they don't say morning, because they forgot to have something like that. And you have to be calling that. And say, I'm down there behind the back. You must do that. I'm not saying that they're doing it. But if you have to church, say, stop it. Hmm. I thought to myself, stop, stop. Just try to kill them. Try to be Keep nice peace. to them. Try to be nice and just understand each other. We need to understand each other everywhere we go. Because that's the devil. The devil wants us to have war. Wants us to argue. Wants us to have. Wants us to have where we go first. That's what he wants us to do. He do not want us to get our life. He come to kill, steal and destroy. Yeah. But no, the thief was dead. Was lost. And lost my body. He came to kill. Oh, my God! 
Yes. The close at him. Close at every day, close and close. That's right. Our oh God, our oh Creator, our oh King of King, our oh Lord of Lord. And today, Bridget, we have a wonderful time in church. Where we are the George, the God thank them pray. Is the church full and everyone full and held empty? That's right. <laughs> Amen. Full and held empty. Yes. That's right. Amen. With a whole lot no man shall see God. Hmm. And said John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me Man. he might have peace. In me he might have peace. And in the world he may have tribulation. But be of good courage. But be of good cheer. I have overcome. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. He has overcome the world. He's been through it. They stone him. They mock him. They spot him in him. They jail. We are going we are going to do nothing. We are going to do nothing, by We are going to do nothing. We are going to do nothing. What you have been through? When they are being true suffering. Yes, right. And no no one has beat you before. No one has beat you before. So please keep the peace, brethren. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you will have these these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world, you might have some lady, sir. It does not, not work working. And the other the argument can happen. You have, you have to stick it out. Yeah. You have to, you have to keep going to work. Because you need money to pay a bill. You have to have your fight and, and that's real and sad, kind of bad. And we are close to a surprise. We are close to a surprise. We are close to a surprise. Yeah. But God is watching them. God is watching them. God is watching them. I know that we are not like that. I stick to peaceful people. I stick to peaceful people. Who that love God. I mean, you think we can't do what we're doing. Continue what we're doing. We are going to continue what we're doing. And we are continuing what we're doing. God. Can you keep us and see us through how to be a nation? 
Sport Track, or testing, walking, or whatever. This world, we are sickness, we are pain, we are sorrows. We have everything. Because we are in a, a body that is not spiritual. That's right. In a spiritual body. But one day, when we go to Wayanda, we have a new body, new neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. We are just passing through this world. We are not here to stay. Um, before I close, I just said this last. My father was a farmer. He was a hard working man. And he died God and everything left behind. Well, you can get the old one. But give me Jesus. You can take my car, my house mother, can can take a car take it with me there. Mm -hmm. So what well well my whole well, land well, what you want to do. That's right. My whole land and they tell that why who are you because you have a nice shoe and you have a nice hat. Well I'm getting away, can you have a good job? Because you're more educated than me. Well I'm jealous in for That's right. I'm, I'm, what am I upsetting for? Why am I jealous in my heart? What? Well, Tinder is word. Well, we soon leave that gone. Leave that thing that gone. That's right. God, this world is not a home. Not a home. I'm passing through. And one final day, we shall read over yonder. Let us shall repeat where we are born. That's my few words in this name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Winston. And that's that's the theme on my heart as well, because you know, the Bible says if we be reason we quest, we must set our affection on things above. There's nothing down here for us. There's nothing down here for us. When yeah. one day, soon one day, we all have to leave this place. And that's one thing we must have at the forefront of our mind that one day we have to leave this place and when we have to meet Jesus yeah. one day we have to meet Jesus but we want to meet Jesus with a glad welcome we want to say welcome we want to meet Jesus with joy and we want to feel that after when we leave this world we have done something to say Lord I have done this in your name Amen you know, with a clear heart, with a clear conscience, knowing that our heart yeah. is pure towards Him, knowing that we love our brethren, and we talk about that peace, that peace coming, loving our brethren, our love, our every, our enemy. Sometimes we have to, even, we have to even love our enemy. That's how deep love is. So, my brethren, the Lord bless you. Thank you. God bless you. I, pass, uh, I think he's gone. God bless you. He's gone off. God bless you, my brethren. God bless and keep every one of you. Thank you for joining us. Sunday, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Have a great week and may the Lord bless you and be with you. In, God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for everyone who joined this teleconference. Pray your blessing will be upon them, Lord. Pray it open ways and avenues. Let your grace and mercy be upon them. I give you thanks for everyone. And Lord Jesus, keep us in perfect peace. And help us that our minds will be stayed on you. We ask his blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great week, everyone.